My name is Max Rogers. I'm the Executive Director with the Neurological Alliance of Ireland, the national umbrella for neurological charities. In the lead up to World Brain Day, we're speaking to patients, clinicians and neurological charity CEOs about their experience of COVID-19 and what it means for their future. Today, I'm very happy to be joined by Emma Rogan. She's a board member with the Neurological Alliance of Ireland, and she's also a person living with MS. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, Emma. Pleasure, Max. Pleasure. Thank you. Can I ask you, first of all, to describe um, COVID-19 and what it was like for you as a person living with MS? For me, as a person with, with MS, um, I was concerned. I was due to start treatment, actually. Um, and this is something that I, I hadn't discussed with, with anyone before. Um, I was due to start treatment, and, and that was put on hold. Um, there were a number of tests that I had to do uh, that couldn't be done. Um, but also, I, I believe the, the doctors made the decision that because of the uncertainty around the virus, my starting treatment was not going to happen. And um, in those, you know, say March, April, May, you know, we're, we're into into the, the, the middle of 2020. Um, so it, I think it's just the uncertainty, the uncertainty and the anxiety. And um, for me, that was very difficult. Uh, Mags, on top of day to day life, um, I think it's the, the uncertainty. I find that difficult. Um, but I have. Uh, I've taken it one day at a time because that is the only way I'm going to get through it. I mean, it's the only way any of us can get through something like this. Just one day at a time and um, focusing on the good things. Um, I have two young children and um, sometimes it's not a good thing because they are very busy and very independent and want to do lots of different things. And in terms of the next couple of months, Emma, the next six months, the next year, what are your your hopes? What are your concerns? This is like a job interview, man. <laughs> I, uh, for the next six months, back to my comments, one day at a time, but I do plan and I do look ahead um, and figure out in as best as I can what I'm going to do with work, what I'm going to do with childcare, what I'm doing in my own social life or free time. Uh, in the next six months, I, I, I really, I have just come off, come back from maturity leave. So it's my priority is uh, work and getting back into the, the swing of things and, and really doing the best that I can with my organisation. Um, and it has been really wonderful to get back to work uh, and to get back with my colleagues and to be doing the things that I love to do other things I love to do other than being with my children uh, and bringing them up but it's just so lovely being back um, and using my mind and using my, my brain in a different way um, my concerns are it's, it's really that COVID-19 um, that we would as a, as a population that we wouldn't take things uh, as seriously as we did at the start of the lockdown uh, I can even see that um, I, I have, I wear a mask when I go out. I have been the only person in many different situations wearing a mask. Um, and social distancing, really, I witnessed people not doing it. Um, and I, I just would be concerned that we would have, that, that it's not going to stop that it's lockdown after lockdown after lockdown and that there will be a piecemeal approach to, um, I suppose, getting back to normal. There's no more normal. There is, that is never going to happen. You know, I, I will look back with fondness at pre-COVID times, but I know that there is no going back to normal, that this is something that I would have to live with and I, I need to do things a bit differently. Um, I hope that I will I will still be um, involved with 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 different organisations and doing different things and getting I, I hope to see my family again you know and, and just get together with people um, but I also know that everything comes with a caveat you know it's, that that wouldn't have been there before there isn't the freedom of movement as I had before. Um, 
So it's it's a it's a it's a mixed bag really looking at the next six months looking at the next year. And finally, Emma, you have a unique perspective because you also work with the European MS platform. Yeah. I mean, what 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 do you think for the for the MS community? The future holds in terms of how services are going to be provided, how people live their lives. Um, it's excuse me. Um, it's it's almost overwhelming. There's so much. There's been such a major impact on the MS community on on the um neurology um people with neurological conditions. There's been such an impact on people. Um, there's for MS societies around Europe, the financial difficulties are going to really hit. You know, it has been very difficult for people to fundraise. You know, even here in Ireland, um, you we all know, you know, the marathons have been suspended, uh, the mud runs or the different fundraisers and getting together and whether it's at branch level, at national level, at regional level. You know, it's it's just been it, it's really really impacted um, MS societies, let's say, generally. But in terms of for for the personal level, for people with the condition, you know, they've been maybe isolated and they can't leave their homes. If they have mobility issues, and um, you know, getting their groceries or medicines or you know how they they have you know, going on public transport now, if you're a wheelchair user, you know, what, touching surfaces, wearing your mask, all, you know, social distancing, all of these things that have to be considered. And, you know, for a lot of our, a lot of people with MS, they perhaps, whilst there's a, a wealth of information online, perhaps they're not computer literate. You know, so how people access information and how people access support has fundamentally changed and it's really responding to that at a time when organizations don't have the financial support that they would have had you know so it's, it's but I, I'm hopeful I, I think that we we do need to do things we are being forced to do things differently and we're being forced to look at things differently and you know we really it, it's it's up to us all to to look to one another to sort things out, to really sort things out, you know, so that it's how do we achieve recovery post, there is no post COVID, but how do we achieve recovery after the lockdown, but a recovery that is for everybody. That's absolutely perfect, Emma. Thank you so much for sharing that perspective.